everything appears to be cool to the touch, but not too cold. Um, it is appropriate skin tone and temperature, moisture, skin tone is good, there is no tenting, smooth texture, and no appearance of lesions. Um, the size of her thorax appears to be appropriate to the rest of her body and for her BMI. If I measure, um, she seems to have her um, AP measurement is less than one half of her transverse, which is good within normal limits. Um, there is no tugging or retractions at her sternal notch. She does not have any thorax deformities such as barrel chesting. Um, and the symmetry of her thorax is also correct. Her clavicles are symmetrical and her sternum appears to be vertical with no abnormalities as previously stated. Okay, Catherine, I'm gonna do excursion, so I'm gonna put my hands around you like so. Go ahead and breathe in and breathe out. Perfect. Positive for retractions, which is normal. Okay, Catherine, now I'm going to listen to your lungs. I'm going to have you breathe in and out through your mouth, but at no faster rate, so just at your normal rate. Okay. okay. Whenever you're ready. Wonderful. Um, the rate of her breath sounds were consistent with vital signs, so at a normal rate. Um, the rhythm was regular. The depth was deep because I was asking her to breathe deeply, and her effort was non-labored. I heard no adventitious breath sounds, and her lungs were clear throughout. Okay, Catherine, I'm just going to check your sides to make sure that you have no lesions. Negative for lesions. Negative for lesions, and I'll just check the back as well. Negative for lesions, good. Okay, Catherine, whenever you're ready, if I could just have you turn around, and I will check your back as well as listen to your back. Sorry, she goes. You're good. <laughs> okay, so Catherine's shoulders appear to be Symmetrical, which is good. Catherine, can you shrug against my hands for me, please? Good. Her shrug was good and strong. Um, her spine appears to be vertical, which is good. There's no curvature to it. Um, and her scapulae are in the proper position. Um, okay, Catherine, I will have you... I'm going to measure down your spine now. I'm going to palpate down your spine. If you feel anything that is tender, just let me know, okay? Okay. Any tenderness or pain? No. Good to hear. Good. Spine is vertical, no abnormalities were felt, um, no bulging discs or anything of the sort was found. Okay, Catherine, similar to what I did on the front, I'm going to do insertion, so can you just have you breathe in for me? Good. Positive for exertion. And her exertion was positive, deep, and symmetrical. Um, again, just checking her... Um, AP to transverse diameter, so AP is 
less than half her transverse diameter, which means that her um, thorax and back are normal. There's no barrel chesting or any other abnormalities going on posterior. Okay, Catherine, I'm going to listen to your lungs now, so if I could have you just give yourself a hug. And I want you to breathe deeply through your mouth, but no quicker than normal. Okay. Okay, whenever you are ready. All right, thank you. The rate of her of her breaths were um, consistent with vital signs. Um, the rhythm was regular, the depth was moderate, and her effort was unlabored. There was no use of accessory muscles, and there were um, vesicular breath sounds heard all throughout, both both posterior and anteriorly, and there were no adventitious breath sounds. Her lungs were clear throughout. Wonderful, Catherine. Thank you. Okay, Catherine, can I actually have you lie down, please? I'm just going to check for pulsations. I'm just going to pull your shirt tight and have you look here. Negative for pulsations on the intercostal spaces. Negative for pulsations on the pericordial area. I'm just going to move your shirt mm -hmm. just a little bit. And negative for pulsations on the epigastric area. You can go ahead and return to normal, please. Now I'm going to um, just feel along your chest and make sure that your heart is doing okay. 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 Can you go here to aortic? Negative for pulses. Negative for thrills. Pulmonic. Negative for pulsations. Negative for thrills. Herbs point. Negative for pulsations. Negative for thrills. Tricuspid. Negative for pulsations. Negative for thrills. Go down here to catch VSD. Negative for pulsations. Negative for thrills. Come down here to mitral. Negative for pulsations. Excuse me. All good. Um, negative for thrills. And then here at the PMI. Positive for pulsations. Negative for thrills. Good. Thank you, Catherine. Mm -hmm. um, all right, that was all good, all normal, and now I'm going to listen to your heart. Um, oh, before I do that, I forgot to tell you that your um, PMI rate was consistent with your vital signs. Um, there was a regular rhythm, appropriate intensity, diameter, duration, and there was no cardiomegaly based on the PMI location. So that is all good and within normal. Now I'm going to listen to your heart. Okay. Aortic. Pulmonic. Herbs point. Tricuspid. Baby step down for VSD. And natural. Good. Now I'm going to listen all the way back through again. Natural. Check for VSD. Tricuspid. Herbs point. Pulmonic. Any work. Now I'm going to switch around and listen with my bell. I'm going to do the same exact thing, okay? Any work. 
Philharmonic. Herb's Point. Tricuspid. BSD. And Mitchell. Wonderful, Catherine. Um, your heart appears to be normal. I heard no extra heart sounds. The rate, the relationship of the S1 to the S2 was normal, um, was within appropriate relationship. Um, the rate was consistent with vital signs, so that is good. The rhythm was regular, and the strength of her heartbeats were strong. Okay, Catherine, we are almost done. I'm just going to percuss across your cardiac silhouette, okay? Pulmonic resonance, cardiac dullness, cardiac dullness, pulmonic resonance. All of that is all of that is within normal findings, so that is good. Um, your cardiac silhouette is appropriate. Um, Catherine, can you remember my name at all? Sarah. Yay, you got it. Okay, um, Catherine, if you could just stand up really quick, I'm gonna check your spine. Just like stand up and face the window. Perfect. So going along here and checking. I see that Catherine has appropriate S curvature to her spine. Thank you, Catherine. I forgot to do that at the beginning. Um, do you have any questions? I do not. Okay. Wonderful. All right, patient. And in. coming inside here, I'm just going to look. Basically, I'm just looking for any patterns of hair loss, any breakage, any, you know, thing that jumps out at me. And it doesn't seem like you have any sort of uh, hair irregularity. Your scalp, while, while I'm over here, is clear. I'm not seeing any lesions, nor am I seeing any um, scaliness, which is good. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of press on your scalp. Just let me know if you feel any pain or tenderness, okay? Okay. And uh, what I'm looking for are any bulges or any um, inconsistencies in your texture. And everything feels fine to me. And just generally looking at your head and your skull, it looks like it's symmetric from all sides. Um, I'm not noticing any sort of deformities or uh, irregularity that jumps out at me, which is good. Um, your skin looks nice as well. Like I'm not seeing any areas of hypo or hyperpigmentation. I'm not seeing any lesions or anything with, you know, redness or cyanosis or jaundice or anything that really is like concerning. I'm going to ask you to make some funny faces for me. If you could raise your eyebrows up and down. Perfect. If you could stick your tongue out, could you wave it back and forth? And show me all your teeth. Nice. All right. So you have some control of all your facial movements, mm -hmm. um, which is nice, which is exactly what we're looking for. Um, if you don't have any other questions for me, we're going to move on to the eye portion of your exam. Okay. Awesome. So first, do you wear corrective lenses? No, I don't. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to stand right here, mm -hmm. 14 feet away from the eye chart. And with both of your eyes, I just want you to read the smallest print that you can see. Q R S T U V. Awesome. All right. Now, could you close one eye and um, read the smallest line that you can see for me? L Q R S U V. All right. And if you could close the other eye and give your eyes some time to focus and read the smallest line that you can see. L Q R S U V. Awesome. And while I have you standing here, what I want to do is kind of just check your visual field. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, have my hand behind you and I'm going to wiggle my fingers. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell me when you can see it. Okay. We're going to okay. do it with both of your eyes and we're going to cover one eye and do it one at a time. Okay. All right. Ready, steady. I can see them. Perfect. I can see them. Perfect. I can see them perfect. Now, if you could close one eye for me, and I want to do the same thing. And all I'm doing is testing. I can see perfect your peripheral vision. See, and I see it perfect. Now, if you can close your other eye, same thing. Last time, I can see perfect. I can see. I can see perfect. All right, that's it. You can go ahead and take a seat now. And what I'm going to do is just kind of continue the exam mm -hmm. where I'm just kind of inspecting you and I'm looking at your lids and your lashes and I'm not seeing any sort of like asymmetry or anything that really like concerns me. Um, what I, I'm taking a look at your lacrimal apparatus, which is your area right up here by your eyebrow. It doesn't look swollen to me. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to like put my thumb and kind of bend your eyes down. I want you to look up 
and I want to just take a look at your conjunctiva here and your sclera, okay? My hands are cold, so I apologize. Look up for me, perfect. And your sclera is in white, conjunctiva is not swollen. I don't see any drainage on uh, either end here, so that looks great. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shine a light mm -hmm. across your eyes, and this is just going to illuminate your cornea, your lenses, and your irises. And what I'm looking out for is for any opacities or shadows, and I don't see any. Perfect, nice and clear, no opacities, no shadows. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just take a look at your eye. I want you to just go ahead and look over my shoulder as I shine the light, okay? Perfect. And it looks like both of your pupils are equal round and reactive to light, which is what I like to see. Now, I want you to take a look at my pen light. And mm -hmm. then I want you to look over my shoulder. Perfect. Now I want you to keep focus on my light okay. as I bring it to your nose. Perfect. And your eyes are converging equally as they should be. And now I want you to just look over my shoulder again and I'm just going to look directly into the light. Perfect. Your um, reflection is equal in both of your eyes. Last thing, a uh, little test I'm going to do is I want you to uh, stay straight and look at my nose. And I just want you to follow my finger. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just testing your extraocular movements. Perfect. And you are you are you are following my finger without any difficulty. I'm not seeing any nystagmus or you know any um, a unilateral movement, uh, which is what I like to see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my scope and I'm just going to and I'm just going to take a closer look at your eye. Okay. So what I want to do first is I'm just going to come here. And from both, and um, all I'm looking for is a visualizing a red reflex, which I saw in both of your eyes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come a little bit closer, and I'm just going to adjust. And I'm actually going to hold your head like this so that I don't, you know, jam you, you in the face with my scope here. And all I'm looking for is to visualize your optic disc. If you could just look over my shoulder. All right, and I can see your optic disc. I can see your veins and your arteries. I can see your arteries are a nice light red. Uh, your veins are darker and it leads up to your optic disc, which is nice yellow and round. So it doesn't really lead me to any sort of irregularity. And then what I want you to do now is I just want you to look straight into my light so I can examine your fovea and macula. And I don't see any foreign body or sister hemorrhages. So I'm gonna do the same thing on your other eye, okay? And if you could look directly into the light, perfect. So um, uh, both of your eyes, um, your your inner internal structures are equal bilaterally. I'm not really seeing anything that is totally concerning to me, you know, like foreign bodies or hemorrhages. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the ear portion of the exam. Um, have you had any sort of uh, issues with your ears or your hearing? No. All right, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with a general inspection and it looks like your ears are uh, symmetric bilaterally. I'm not really seeing any sort of like lesions or swelling that really concerns me. I'm going to just take a quick feel. If you could turn your head that way for me. And I'm just, you let me know if you feel any sort of tenderness, okay? Okay. And behind your ear. And then if you could turn the other way for me. And I'm not really feeling any swelling. Everything looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the um, internal structures and I'm gonna do a couple hearing tests on you, okay? Okay. So what I'm just gonna do is you can turn your head that way. And I'm just going to brace. There we go. And I'm just looking here for your, at your ear canal and your tympanic membrane, if I can visualize it. And perfect, your ear canal looks clear. I'm not seeing any foreign bodies or bleeding or anything concerning. Your tympanic membrane is a nice pearly gray with good light reflection and no distension that I can see. If you could turn the other way for me. And do the same thing here. Perfect, ear canal is clear. I'm not seeing any swelling or redness and your tympanic membrane is a nice pearly gray with good light reflection and no swelling or distension. Um, what I'm going to do now is just a couple of hearing tests. So what I want to do is I want you to close one ear at a time 
and I'm going to step to the side and ask you to uh, whisper a couple words, okay? Or repeat a couple words that I whisper. 99. Can you try? Perfect. Can you close the other ear? 99. Can you try? Perfect. The last um, one. We'll assess those with the pen light. Uh, I'm just going to have to remove your glasses. <clears throat> then you're just going to have the patient look straight ahead. You look, look at my nose. And then I'm just going to shine this light and see if your pupils constrict. And you want to be watching for constriction in both the eye that you're shining the light in, um, as well as the eye uh, that you're not shining the light in. So they should be constricting at the same time. Um, and hers did. Her pupils are equal, uh, round, and reactive to light and accommodation. And that's what you want to look for. And you have your glasses back if you want. Um, next is going to be um, eye movement, and that's cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, um, the ocular motor, the trochlear, and the abducens. Um, and you can test that by having the patient follow um, your finger in the six cardinal directions of eye movement. So if you just look straight at my finger and then follow. Next, you could test cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal, and that's going to be responsible for both um, jaw movement and some facial sensation. Um, so first, I'm just going to put my hands on the sides of your jaw and have you open, close, and clench. Good. Then to assess um, sensation, you get a Q-tip, um, cut one side off so you have a soft and a sharp side. I'll just have you close your eyes. And just tell me which side I'm touching your face with, soft or sharp. Soft. Sharp. Good. So next you want to do um, cranial nerve 7, and that's the facial nerve. And that's going to be responsible for um, facial movement. Um, so I'm going to have the patient um, puff out your cheeks. And I'll smile. Now frown. Now close your eyes real tight. Good. So those are all normal. Um, next is going to be uh, cranial nerve 8, the vestibular and cochlear nerve. And um, that's going to be associated with hearing. Um, so you can kind of assess that throughout the assessment if the patient um, has trouble hearing or if they're hearing you pretty clearly. Um, you might suspect something's wrong with that nerve. Um, you could also do a whisper test where you um, occlude one ear and whisper some two-syllable word and have them repeat that back to you and see if they can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and close one ear. Baseball. Baseball. Apple. Apple. Good. So her hearing is pretty intact. Um, next is going to be cranial nerves 9 and 10, the uh, glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve. And um, those both innervate um, the swallowing action as well as uh, movement of the soft palate and the uvula. So can you swallow for me? Good, and can you open your mouth? And say ah. Uh. Good, and you wanna look and see if the uvula is um, midline. Um, you don't want it to deviate at all. Something could be potentially wrong if that's the case. Um, next is cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory. Um, and you could test that by um, applying some resistance to the shoulders and the um, jaw and have them push against that. So just shrug your shoulders up. Good. Push against my hand. The other one. Good. And um, they should feel pretty strong and uh, both sides should be equal as well. Um, cranial nerve 12 is the hypoglossal, and that's responsible for tongue movement. So if you just have the patient stick their tongue straight out, and you just want to be looking um, that that tongue is symmetrical and it sticks out midline. If it deviates to one side, um, that particular side of the brain could be affected. So those are all the cranial nerve tests. Um, next, you want to assess 
uh, start assessing motor function. So first you're just going to assess, I'm just going to take your arm and kind of move it for you in like a passive range of motion. And basically you're assessing for um, muscle tone, uh, you're looking for any kind of visible muscle atrophy, and you just kind of have to make a uh, subjective determination whether um, they have a healthy muscular tone. Um, I believe she does, and I don't see any um, muscle atrophy occurring. Next, you're gonna test uh, muscle strength. So, and you wanna test uh, strength against resistance. And you're basically looking for um, that they're, they have some strength against resistance and that the resistance is, um, or their strength is equal on both sides. So if one side is particularly weaker than the other, um, that could indicate some neurological damage. So can I just have you put your hands straight out like this? And I'm gonna squeeze your fingers in and I want you to try to resist me doing that. Like flare them out like that, yeah. I'm gonna keep them flared. Good, then make this. I'm gonna try to push your fist down like your wrist. sides like this. I'm going to push up and down and you push back. Good. Good. I'm going to pull out and you pull back in. Good. Now you push out. I push. Do this side. And. Good. Now do your arms straight up. I'm going to push up and down again. Up. Good. 